<laughs> so just to kick things off, I was wondering if you could give me a little bit of an overview about McPhee Energy, uh, where you guys came from, what you stand for, <laughs> that type of thing. So McPhee Energy is a forerunner in uh, hydrogen technology. Uh, we created this company exactly 10 years ago. Uh, and we position this company on uh, the production and delivery of hydrogen, decarbonized hydrogen, for the AV transportation and for the industry. And in a decade, uh, McPhee positioned itself as uh, one of the world leaders uh, in uh, hydrogen production with uh, water electrolysis and uh, refilling station. We have 16 megawatts of uh, big platforms of water electrolysis, and we have now delivered 21 refilling stations uh, in uh, France, in uh, Germany, in China, in Singapore, uh, in the UK also. And we have operations, uh, we are a French-based company, but we have operations in, in Italy. I believe there is something with my microphone. No? Okay, so we have operations in Italy, in Germany, and we have op operations in China also. And we have uh, an industrial infrastructure ready to scale up with the market. Okay, so you guys are really present all over the world with this type of thing. You have all these stations and operations bases, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, at this point today in 2019, what's the vision of your company? Okay, our vision is to develop what we call unlimited hydrogen. And uh, it's really a change of paradigm in uh, addressing the, the, the hydrogen solution. Um, uh, we believe that uh, the hydrogen is the only energy able to scale up, uh, to be at scale, uh, to decarbonize the industry and the heavy transportation. Oh, okay. the, um, when, you, when you want to refill buses, when you want to refill heavy trucks, fuel cell trucks, and now uh, fuel cell trains, you need uh, several tons per day of hydrogen to refill those big vehicles. And um, uh, unlimited hydrogen is removing any limit in capacity for the, uh, for the products that we develop. Okay, so uh, of course you need to be producing several tons of hydrogen a day to fill all of those needs. Um, but although in fuel cells the, the technology is sound, there's not so many necessarily on the road. Uh, are you actually seeing a use for all this unlimited hydrogen that you guys are, are yeah. creating? We, we see more and more uh, vehicle on the, on the roads, clearly. Uh, we will, we're actually delivering in north of France uh, a platform to refill 10 buses. This is in the city of lens bethune in the north of France, Haute-France. And um, uh, that uh, refilling station will be in operation in June. Uh, that will be the first of this size in, in France. Uh, and we produce uh, 200 kilograms per day with water electrolysis. And we refill those 200 kilograms per, per day in the 10 buses of the city of lens bethune And uh, we are developing those projects uh, in France, in Europe, also in China. So there is a huge demand. And we are working with now uh, trucks uh, manufacturer, uh, fuel cell trucks, and you have seen certainly the, announce, uh, the announcement of Alstom for the fuel cell trains. And this is uh, already running in Germany. Uh, all the big regions in France are interested in those fuel cell trains. And what we are actually uh, displaying this year in Hanover Fair is the augmented mic filling, really to serve this market. Okay, so I've, I've got to say that all of your products, I, I love the names that you go with, keeping it all within the family. So you have the augmented McFilling now uh, to, mac your, to match the McPhee Energy name. So I love that. I think that's pretty fun. <laughs> um, so if fuel cells uh, in the mobility sector take off the way that we're all hoping or expecting to an extent that it will, well, you'll be able to meet that demand, it sounds like then. Yes, absolutely. Um, we announced here last year exactly at this fair this uh, augmented micalyzer, so it's the new generation of uh, alkaline pressurized electrolyzer that we deliver now to the industry. Uh, we use also this uh, augmented micalyzer to feed the augmented mic feeding. <laughs> the, um, the, the combination of uh, a unique uh, alkaline pressurized technology with advanced electrodes from Denora allow us to, to pro, pro, pro produce and propose uh, 20 megawatt platforms, 100 megawatt platform, and very soon gigawatt platform to the big industry. And we will use the same technology 
combined with our augmented mic feeding. So augmented mic feeding, what is it? It's a, it's a big refilling station. I mean, at least one ton, and certainly more than two tons per day, uh, to refill buses, to refill AV trucks, and re to refill trains. And in, in this concept, uh, in this architecture, we mutualize, we mutualize all, the, all the functions. The, the productions, the compression, the storage, the cooling down, and the dispensers. So it's and really we, mutual, uh, and we put all those functions in contact with all the others with a kind of gas flow multiplexer. And, and we combine that with a very smart software. So we combine, in fact, uh, 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 an architecture with a digitalized, di digitalized technology. OK, great. Um, with your smart software, could you give us a little bit of an overview about what makes that different and what sort of, I mean, of course, I can imagine that it increases convenience, but probably also increases accuracy and needs. Could you yeah. talk a little bit about, about your software? This, this, is, uh, this, this, uh, this is not only a software. This is an architecture with a software. And with that, we are able to optimize the, the, the availability and the reliability of the risk feeding station. When you have to deliver hydrogen to trucks or to trains and to buses, you have to produce and deliver every day what is needed. So you cannot afford to be uh, in maintenance or to be in, uh, not available. So and this is a, a big step that we will, we will provide to this, in, to this, in this industry. Uh, I know a lot of refilling stations which are never available or not always available. Uh, when you want to deliver hydrogen to trains and to trucks or buses, you have to be available. So this is a way for us to be fully available. And um, when you have those big size, um, and uh, the, the, this, uh, this uh, refilling station can reconfigure itself dynamically. So uh, in real time, uh, they can adapt to, uh, if there is a compressor failure, for example, they will use the other compressor and it will be completely transparent for the end user. So increasing the readability, increasing the availability, decreasing the cost, we know that uh, for uh, hydrogen to be used as a, as a, as a combustible uh, for the heavy transportation, it has to be competitive with the diesel. Right, and um, at the moment we're, we're not particularly competitive with diesel. Are, are we, we uh, the hydrogen costs are still relatively high, is that right? Yeah, uh, yes and no. Okay. <laughs> uh, with our uh, generators and with our refilling station, we believe that we can produce, and I was uh, speaking at a conference uh, last month in France, uh, we believe we can produce uh, hydrogen uh, competitive with the hydrogen coming from natural gas. It's a big, big change, because uh, this is really a game changer. Uh, and we, we, we believe truly that if we want to push hydrogen, we have to be competitive with the hydrogen coming from the hydrocarbons. And if we want to push hydrogen for transportation, we have to be as competitive as a diesel. And we are able to do that. With our big MacLyzer, uh, MacLyzer and MacFeeding, I believe we will be able to, I mean, to afford to, uh, the, 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 to our customers the possibility to sell hydrogen at 5 euro, 6 euro per kilogram, which is more competitive than the diesel in Europe. Definitely. I mean, I, I thought that uh, we were sort of still around like the 12 to 15 euros per kilo, kilo yeah. mark. So if this you're is, able to drop is, that, that's true. fantastic. Yeah, this is true for the small, small generators, for the small refilling. But now, I mean, uh, with the big uh, platforms that we deliver, uh, I believe we can produce hydrogen between 1.5 euro and 2 euro per kilogram and deliver to the, to the, to the AV duty uh, vehicle at five or six euro per kilogram. Right, so what you're saying is that there's an economy in scale. Uh, the more you're producing and the bigger machines you're using, uh, the lower the overall cost of hydrogen is for you to produce, and hopefully those savings to a point get passed on to the end user. Yeah. All right, fantastic. Um, so I think that's, that's fantastic, and I was just sort of curious, going back to your software for the, uh, for the uh, sorry, for your um, McFilling station, um, you mentioned that it's dynamic. So if one system fails or one cylinder fails, it's still able to take over. Mm. Uh, and does that, it does that automatically without, the, you, or without uh, a person monitoring it? It no. just, it knows 
how to do that? It is fully autonomous. I mean, uh, the, the, the platform and the, uh, the, Mac, the refilling station will reconfigure, uh, reconfigure itself dy dynamically in real time. So it's completely transparent for the users of the platform. And um, if, for example, a, a, a tank is, is, uh, is empty, uh, we, will, we will use the, the compressor to refill this, this tank using the other tanks to uh, fill the vehicle. So it's completely transparent. It's a real-time data management. Uh, it's, it's a big data management, in fact, that we do on the, on the refilling station. OK, and, and you have a, a prototype or a demo here with you? Or is yes, it an we, actual have, model? we have a movie on our booth where you can see uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a model that we, we display. And we have our engineers to, here on, on the booth to explain to our customers uh, how it works. OK, so if you're interested in seeing the actual size of the uh, McFilling stations or fueling, you can head on back to booth C70. It's actually just right behind the stage here. Might even be able to see the McPhee sign from where you're sitting. Uh, and I think that'd be really interesting to kind of get an idea of what it is exactly that you're talking about, kind of see it with your own two eyes. So I encourage you to do that for sure. Um, so that's excellent. Thank you for sharing about the new technology and the term of unlimited hydrogen. Um, at this point, I was just curious, What's next for McPhee? You have been continuously producing and innovating within this field. What's coming up next? Yeah, clearly we, we will continue to innovate. I mean, uh, it's, it's our genetic uh, uh, configuration. Innovation is really uh, the art of, uh, and the, the, the core of, uh, of McPhee. Uh, the, the next step for us is, is delivering the growth to scale, to scale up with the market. And uh, I am glad to, to tell that uh, uh, EDF, the French utility company, I mean, the leader in electricity, decarbonized electricity, uh, took a share in our company last year. And uh, we have uh, with uh, EDF a very strong partnership, technical and commercial partnership, and R&D partnership also. And EDF announced yesterday morning that they have created now a new subsidiary, Inomix, a fully owned uh, EDF subsidiary, to invest in, in big platforms for, in, for AV industry, and AV transportation. So they will invest and operate those, uh, those platforms and will provide the technology they need. So clearly, I believe uh, the, the future is bright for McPhee and, and for also the hydrogen market. Of course, so uh, with that, that's fantastic news as well for you guys. Um, but you mentioned that there will be some challenges with scalability. Uh, can you speak a little bit to what you expect to see on the horizon, maybe some of the challenges uh, in that area? Well, you know, I mean, uh, we are part of the Hydrogen Council. The Hydrogen Council uh, predict that uh, in 2050, uh, hydrogen will represent 20% of the final energy consumption. That will represent 20% of the needed decarbonation of the uh, uh, energy uh, to, uh, to uh, meet the uh, two degree scenario of the uh, Paris uh, Agreement. Uh, that will represent 2.5 trillions of dollars of business. So. It's, it, it's in uh, 30 years, so it's, uh, it's a long time. But they have predicted, they have a roadmap, and they said that uh, in this decade, 20 to 30, they will invest, we have to invest 25 billions of dollars every year to, uh, to be at scale. Uh, and we are, we are exactly, and two thirds of this uh, investment will be on the upstream chain of uh, hydrogen. So hydrogen generation with decarbonized technology, and hydrogen delivery to uh, the, uh, the, the, the vehicles. And this is exactly where we, are positioned, we have positioned McPhee. Fantastic. So you believe that you guys are ready and able to meet that demand as the continued uh, need for hydrogen comes up within Europe and within France uh, to meet those objectives? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and we are ready to scale up. I mean, we have uh, operation in, in industrial infrastructure in France, in, uh, next to Grenoble. Uh, we have also a big factory in Tuscany where we produce our, uh, our stacks and our electrolyzers. And we have a team in Germany focused on big platforms of water electrolysis. So I believe we are one of the few able to scale up with the market. Okay, so you're here and you're ready. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's fantastic. It sounds like the future is bright for McPhee. Um, at this point, we do have a couple of minutes left. If, okay, we have some questions. Just put your hand up and I will bring the microphone down to you. Uh, 
Hi, my name is Alex. Uh, the company is Intralink. Uh, we do business development in Asia. Uh, Pascal, really nice to, uh, to meet you. I thought it was really interesting. Uh, you mentioned China and Singapore as um, target markets for you. Uh, the question really is, um, what have you noticed in terms of the difference in needs and, and pain points from uh, markets in Asia compared to the markets in Europe? Okay, uh, we, we are active in China. We, we have uh, three, uh, three employees in China. Uh, China is, is much faster than Europe. Clearly, uh, they are investing a lot uh, to develop this uh, fuel cell technology. They are investing a lot also now to develop the uh, water electrolysis and the refilling uh, station. Uh, it's, it's challenging for us uh, to, to, uh, to be at the same speed. Uh, and it's challenging for us also. I mean, I'm convinced that uh, to be active in China, we have to localize part of our supply chain in China. So uh, we are in discussion with some, uh, some players that uh, want to partner with us. And uh, we will uh, stay tuned. We, we will, you will see uh, what will happen soon. Thank you. Are there any other questions at this time? Okay, well, if anyone comes up with anything that they would like to ask Pascal, I'm sure he would be more than happy to answer. So head on back to booth C70 um, in order to continue the discussion, hear a little bit more about what McPhee is doing these days. So at this point, Pascal, thank you so much for joining us here today, and I hope you continue to enjoy your time at the Hanover Fair.